John Wellinghoff, welcome to 13 Action News. Thanks Thank for you, coming on. Thanks so let's talk about this new decision that's likely to be ratified <clears throat> by the Public Utilities Commission on Friday. And that is finally, all of these customers are going to be grandfathered in solar customers to old rates. Everybody seems so happy about this. Solar City seems happy. Uh, the, the governor seems happy. NV Energy uh, seems happy. How did we get to this we are the world moment? Well, we are all happy. Uh, I'm not sure how we got to this moment because interestingly enough, in the initial case that NV Energy filed, they didn't ask for this. That's uh, true. They yeah. never did and they yeah. said that consistently. Yeah, yeah. no, they, they didn't ask for it. And we certainly <laughs> obviously didn't ask for it. So it was one of those strange occurrences that, you know, I'm not sure how, it, and I wasn't involved in that case. I wasn't with Solar City at that particular time. But I'm not sure how. It's one of those things that, that happened as they start, started putting the order together. And one of the problems is, and, and to defend the PUC a little bit, and I'll actually do that, is, you know, they were up against some legislative pressure to get an order out in a very short period of time. And, in fact, they admitted plainly in their order that they really lacked the time and the data to fully review everything. And so I think they were under a lot, tremendous amount of time pressure, and things got done, and obviously, you know, it's someti sometimes you do things that you regret. And I think at this point, everybody regretted that. And we're, we're very hopeful that the commission will uh, look favorably on the stipulation on Friday. We're looking forward to that. I think it's very likely that that happens, as I'm sure you do, too. Uh, but I guess what I'm wondering now is the question is, okay, well, what happens going forward? Yes. Right? I mean, the grandfathering of 32,000 or so customers who the argument was uh, shouldn't have been affected adversely by whatever the, 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 the state regulators do on this issue of the subsidy or net metering, whatever you want to describe. What happens going forward, though? What are the issues going forward? Because, you know, people have read about this. Solar City, for instance, has suffered terrible losses, financial losses, recently went into a merger with Tesla. Those are two cousins combining uh, their, their companies. There have been some reports. There was one, I think, just yesterday in Bloomberg about how the whole rooftop solar industry is changing, that economic uh, conditions have changed. Where do we go from here? Well, and that's a very good question, John, because it is very important that we make solar viable again for customers in Nevada, that we give them choices. So we have a number of avenues that we're pursuing actively here in Nevada. But the first thing I want to say is that this decision or this stipulation and hopefully the decision on Friday will allow Solar City to start coming back into Nevada doing business because of those 32,000 customers, there's literally thousands of them that got applications in before that deadline at the end of December 31st, but didn't get solar systems put in on their homes uh, and businesses. So we're very interested in actively going back and working with those customers, to our customers, uh, and ensuring that they can get that solar installed and they can get that older uh, rate uh, that will provide them with those economic benefits. Well, before you go on, though, yeah. let me ask you about that. You're yeah. talking about going into, I mean, there's two subsets of people. There are these customers that you're talking about, you have to go back and talk right. to. Then there are potential future customers, yes, right? Exactly. So, yes, exactly. So let, let's talk, first of all, you have to go back to these customers. Right. Uh, do they get the same contracts? You know, there was some yeah, yes. talk before you got to Solar City, and this wasn't just with Solar City, that promises were made by these solar companies. There were unrealistic promises, your rates will never go up, and, and yes. all the rest of it. Do their contracts get changed? Is everything the same? Well, we weren't making those promises. I guarantee you, Solar City wasn't, because I've reviewed that in the five months that I've been at Solar City, and 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 the representations that we make to our customers are accurate and correct. But yes, they get the same contracts that they were under, and those contracts also provide them the same rates that the other uh, NEM customers get, the the net energy metering customers get uh, prior to December 31st. So they're going to have, in essence, a one-to-one -one offset to their retail rate continuing on for 20 years, assuming that the commission does you know, ratify the stipulation, right. which we're all hopeful that they will do. But going forward, that, and that is the question, let me tell you the avenues we're pursuing. The first one, and I think the most important one is, when the commission made their decision back in, January, in uh, December and ratified it in Febu February, that decision can always be changed at any new rate case when a company files a new rate case. And every three years, each company, Nevada Power and Sierra Pacific, have to file a rate case. And Sierra Pacific did file their new rate case in May of this year. So when they filed that rate case, that again opens up everything else, meaning we can go in and re-argue to the commission that there needs to be a new rate set 
for potential solar customers going forward. Why? Why does I mean? Wh th that's why, the, the, why are we arguing that? Well, because I, yeah, I guess because I, we believe the old rate was not a proper rate because it was too low because the commission themselves admitted in their order that we, as I said, didn't have the time and the data, and they only looked at two of 11 factors in this model that they used to determine what are the costs and benefits. So we're going in and redoing that model. We're going in and putting in all 11 factors, and we're putting in factors not for the statewide uh, uh, variables that we did back in um, uh, June, I think we filed actually a we, we had a press conference and did a, a study statewide. We're doing one specifically for Northern Nevada that will be f filed in that case by one of our witnesses, one of our Solar City employees, who actually is a former PG&E engineer, distribution engineer, knows this stuff inside and out. And we'll also have a, another outside consultant to testify to a rate design from that study. And we'll put it before the commission in an evidentiary hearing where Nevada Power can cross-examine us, the staff can cross-examine us, and the commission can. And we'll have a whole, full, open, transparent process where then the commission can issue an order and decide whether or not there are more benefits and costs. And we believe that that hearing, based upon the evidence we'll present, will show that there are more benefits than costs and therefore that going forward, solar customers should get paid something near above or maybe slightly below, but near that retail rate for every kilowatt hour that they put out on the grid. So you still need a subsidy? It's not a subsidy. Yeah, I know you guys hate it when I say well, subsidy. Well, you hate it when anybody no, says I subsidy. No, I, I don't hate but it. But they're treated differently than someone I don't hate it. Have... I don't hate it. It's only incorrect <laughs> if the benefits outweigh the costs. Okay, so if, let's... in fact, you can prove, if you can prove, and that's what we're trying to do is prove in an evidentiary hearing that the benefits outweigh the costs, then it's not a subsidy. It's still a subsidy, even if you can, because some of these, am I? No, 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 no. Well, wait a second. Some, some of these are intangible me, benefits, let, let are they not? Let, the, let me back you up. No, none of them are intangible. No. We're, we're not putting intangible benefits in. We're putting in the benefits of, first of all, how much generation do we avoid? Number one, how much line losses do you avoid? That's number one. Number two, how much line losses do you avoid from not having to transmit from out at Clark Station or out at, you know, wherever, uh, you know, these, these plants are out hundreds of miles away. Number three, how much do you avoid by not having to go through the local transformer? How much do you avoid by not having line losses in the local distribution system? Because that kilowatt hour that I'm producing in my house, where's it going? It's going next door, right? So ultimately, all of those things are benefits down the line. And we have engineers that are calculating those benefits. So there's nothing intangible about it. None of them are intangible. So ultimately, if we can show through tangible, de demonstrable benefits that those benefits outweigh the cost, there is no subsidy. You're sure about that? You don't like the word subsidy. I'm positive. Are you even allowed to say the word subsidy? Well, I'll say subsidy if it exists, but you can't say there's a subsidy if you, you, you give me $2 and I give you $3 back. There's no subsidy there because ultimately you got a net benefit out of that, that exchange. And that's the same thing we're saying here. I put a solar system on my house and I'm giving a net benefit to the guy next door. So you're saying He's not subsidizing me, I'm giving him something. And in fact, it's, it's, it's a net asset that's going out from me, the solar customer, to the guy next door if in fact there's net benefits out of this study. Well, so I think it'll come out either even or potentially a little bit above, ultimately, meaning there's no subsidy. If it comes out below, I'll admit there's a subsidy. If it comes out below that retail rate, there's a subsidy. But you know, how much below is it? You know penny below is it half a penny below is it or is it right at and we're, we're coming pretty close I'm looking at the draft study that our engineers are doing right now and we're coming out very very close I guess what I'm wondering is going forward uh, there's got to be hundreds probably thousands of people who are interested in, in putting on rooftop solar panels uh, yes. right yeah in, in Las and Vegas I think there's tens of thousands tens of thousands so solar yes. city wants yes. to come back here and do business it's obvious why yes. these solar companies want to do business yeah. here it's sunny all the time and you customers know? want it and, and customers want it yeah. but are customers going to be properly protected too? Because I know you say Solar City never made promises that they couldn't keep. Yes. But I think customers, especially after all the publicity that all this has gotten and, and, and the talk of a bait and switch and, and, and all the rest of it, Mr. Wellinghoff, I guess what I'm wondering is, what, I mean, you used to be a consumer advocate. Uh, so are, are these customers going to be, I want to put rooftop solar on. How do I know I'm going to be protected? John, John, I used to be even more than a consumer advocate. I was the head of the Washoe County District Attorney's Consumer Protection Division. 
So I was. How you did know, you lose your way, so, sir? So, so I, so I was, <laughs> I was in the consumer fraud division of the DA's but office. People want to be protected, there right? They are, want to know. There are scam artists in every single industry, including the solar industry. Especially a new emerging technology exactly. like solar, right? So they need to be protected, and you know how they're protected? They're protected by the laws of the state of Nevada, which include the Deceptive Trade Practices Act, which is a very extensive act that I used to enforce as the district attorney. They're also protected by the false advertising acts that are very extensive. And those laws are enforced by the Attorney General's office and the District Attorney's office. So we have laws in place. We have what we need to protect consumers. All the consumer has to do is file a complaint. They file a complaint, those complaints are investigated and ultimately can be acted on. So we have mechanisms to ensure that there is effective consumer protection in the state. Uh, I mentioned, and you know this as well as anybody, the economics of the whole solar industry and rooftop solar have changed. I mentioned this piece, I'm sure you saw it this week in Bloomberg where they talked about other yes. states are going through similar yes. kind, kinds of convulsions uh, over this. So let's talk about going forward. People read the paper, they see Solar City, and I'm, as I mentioned, the losses that were going on, the merger with Tesla. Convince me, persuade me that this company is healthy enough to do business here. Because I don't want to. I don't want to have you yeah. sell me a solar yeah. panel if I think you're going to go out of business next no, week. No, exactly. No, and we're extremely healthy. Extremely healthy to do business here. I mean, we do have operations in over 20 states in the U.S. You're losing money. Uh, you're losing money. We, 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 correct. We, right. We, cor correct. But, <laughs> we, but we're close to positive cash flow. We're moving close to positive cash flow. We're getting tighter in our expenses. We're getting more efficient, more effective, and we have the largest, most effective. Uh, sales and installation team in the United States. You need Vegas, none. don't you, to make this company successful? No. It's a huge no. market for you, isn't no, it? No, we don't. You don't need Vegas? No, we don't need Vegas because we have Texas. We've opened up in Texas. Texas is a huge, Texas huge Texas is market. a big state, I heard. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> state. There's a lot of people, a lot more people in Texas than there is in Nevada. So we, we've just moved into Austin. Uh, we actually are selling in, in, in Houston as well. And so we have Texas, and we've just moved into Texas. So why, why the merger with Tesla, and why did you need that? Well, w we haven't done the merger yet. Well, oh, it's I, pending, I, but it's I, proposed. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't speak about whether it's going to, in fact, happen. It's one of those sort why of do you need it, though? quiet periods. Why do you need I, it? I, th I think it's, it's – I'm not sure that we need it, but I'll tell you that it, I think it's good, and I, I think it's positive personally. My personal opinion is I think it's a positive thing for the company from the standpoint of the synergies. Of, first of all, you have a company – that makes batteries. They've got this huge, you know, factory. The gigafactory, Reno, right? The gigafactory out of Reno, and those batteries, I think, uh, you know, it's going to be top of the line technology, which is also going to drive down prices with the scale that they're doing. And so, to be able to merge with a company like that and to put systems together, which include not only the solar panels but also the storage technology, and we also have a deal with Nest. We're working with Nest on, th on thermostats as well. And when you put all these technologies together, you have a total system package that you can provide consumers. And so you're not selling... Synergy, isn't that the word everybody uses well, in business? Yeah, it's synergy, that's one. <laughs> but but ultimately, you're not selling just solar panels anymore. You're selling energy services to, to customers. You know, you're, you're, you're in essence providing those customers with a total service package that can provide them with ways to best control their energy costs. And I th really think that's the future of these types of companies, the company the Solar City that I'm with, and I think you're going to see more mergers and consolidations of these companies because they're going to want to bring in other pieces of the total system to provide the customers with a better option for those systems. Let's talk about a couple other things. We have a few minutes left. Uh, so the, there was going to be a rooftop solar initiative that's not needed now. It didn't qualify. That got knocked off the yes, ballot. Yes. But there still are policy questions. I think yes. you'd agree confronting the legislature yes, uh, next year. What What are the main policy Big questions so, they policy have to questions. resolve? Well, of course, we still do have on the ballot the uh, Nevada Energy Choice Initiative. And that was the one other one I was going to say. That's yeah. some people call it deregulation. They don't like calling it deregulation. I it's like restructuring. Choice. Restructuring. I like restructuring. Um, I think that initiative very likely will pass, and I think that then it's got to pass twice though. But, but I think the legislature faces some very immediate choices. Do they want to let it pass twice and then wait till the very end of 2023 to do anything? Or do they want to start something in this session? So they might feel pressure if it passes, especially with like 70% of the vote or something, exactly. which is possible exactly. to act. So, so it, it's essentially unneeded. So it, it's not taken out of their hands. Yeah, I think, I think they, should, they, should, they should take control ultimately and show the voters that they can, in fact, put... Nevada's energy future on a firm footing, and by doing that, I think there's lots of options they have. They can go to full restructuring, they can go to a, a structure where it 
they provide for retail access, which I think is a good thing. I think customers have choice. So, so tell me what that means. Well, it means it means what they do in Texas right now means that if I want if I want electricity, I have a choice of 25 different energy providers. I can decide whether I want you know uh, energy at the wholesale price on an hourly basis, whether I want to hedge against energy prices for the next 10 years, whether I want to get free nights and weekends. There's, there's people who offer free nights and weekends to cust customers to do that. So you have a whole array of energy choices, or do I want to put solar on with my energy that we're actually selling, bundling with a retail provider in Texas to, to provide no, not only the retail energy, but solar on your house as well. So those kind of choices, I think, are the things that we need to provide Nevadans. But Certainly, but if the MGM can get those choices and, and those, those types of people, why shouldn't you know, the average consumer in Nevada have that choice I as well? I guess what I'm wondering, though, is that choice sounds good and it seems good. I, I want to have a choice in, in most products that I have. I want Because there's competition and that helps right. me a, as a consumer. Right. On, on the other hand, energy is a little bit different in the sense that when I go into my house, I want reliability, I right. want stability. While there are problems with right. having, in my opinion, a regulated monopoly that has so much power, right. so to speak, no right. pun intended, right. at least you know the lights are going to come on, the right. AC is going to come on. Uh, how will it work to make sure that customers, again, I'll bring up the same issue, I know you've been concerned about your entire career, protected to make sure if I choose right. a non-NV uh, Energy company that it's, that it's going to work? Right. The reliability is going to be primarily in the hands of the wires companies, and those companies are not going to change from monopolies. There still will be monopoly. There's still, still NV Energy's wires. Yeah, there'll still be a distribution system that uh -huh. will provide the wires, and that's, that's where the problems are caused where you have the outages from the wind storms and, right. and lightning and the hail storms exactly. and hurricanes and everything else. So those people will still be around. They'll still be providing the reliability. We'll still be providing them some, you know, incremental amount in our bill that they'll have to be paid to be compensated and compensated at a, at a just and reasonable rate to continue to provide that reliability. That will still happen. Do you believe that Envy Energy, as they've claimed and as as their CEO said on this, uh, right where you're sitting now, that they're neutral on deregulation? You believe they're neutral? Uh, that's what uh, uh, Mr. Cuddell has told me as well. That's I, not I what I asked you. Do you believe them? Do I them? believe them? Yeah, I believe them. You sure. do? Yeah. Why would they be neutral? Who gives up a monopoly well, willingly? If they're, if they're not neutral, okay, if they're, say, opposed to it, then what are they doing to oppose it? I mean, I, I've, I've seen no visible signs of them, you know, there, there's no TV ads running. So you take Envy Energy at face value. Well, Since when do you well, do that? Well, no, I'm, no, I don't completely take okay. them at face value. I look at all the other evidence, and I don't see any other evidence that shows me anything contrary to what they've told me. All right. John Willinghoff, always a pleasure. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, John. All right.